Well, thanks so much for joining us. As Friday rolls around, we always invite our special guest, the Night Sky Guy, Andrew Fazekas. Hi, Andrew. Well, good morning, Carrie. Good morning. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us, and uh, happy Halloween to you. And I was wondering, are you dressing up the little one for Halloween? Well, yeah, we have a little pumpkin suit Aww, for her. Oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> How old is she now? She's just turned nine months. Oh, beautiful. That's going to be a lot of fun pictures there. We'll have a great time tonight, Andrew. And for those people who love to look up in the night sky, what are they going to see? Well, just in time for Halloween, trick-or-treaters have a really little scary sight up in the sky. And it's really convenient because it's just when you go out trick-or-treating at sunset. And you look towards the western horizon or southwest horizon, very low where the sun sets in that direction, you'll see this really eerie-looking thin, razor-thin moon, crescent moon, very low in the horizon. And then if you look to the upper left of it, will be this really white star-like object, and that, in fact, is planet Venus. So it makes a ve really very pretty pairing, very spectacular pairing, and where the sun sets in that direction of the sky tonight. And that's right after sunset. And what's neat is that over the course of the next few days, if you get clouded out tonight, you can see the moon switch positions and move to the left of Venus by tomorrow night, Saturday night. Then on Sunday night, the moon will be even farther away from Venus, and it'll appear sandwiched between Venus on its right-hand side and Jupiter, another bright star-like object, on the left of the, uh, left of the moon. Then, finally, on November 3rd, the moon is going to be snuggling up right underneath Jupiter, and you can't miss, miss it because Jupiter is one of the brightest star-like objects in the southern sky. And then by Tuesday, the moon will have moved off to the left of Jupiter. So the moon will act as a really great guidepost to finding both two planets, Jupiter and Venus, over the course of the next few days. And it's great, especially for people who've never seen these planets before. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting, and especially because you've got several days to look at it. Now, what I was amazed about when I just saw this picture a little bit earlier on this morning, and we've got to show everybody, because let's do the cosmic quiz right now, okay? And then we'll get into all the star news. Uh, but you can see this shot here, and tell everybody what, what we're seeing, and this is part of the quiz today. That's right. What you're looking at is a, is a very spooky uh, space cloud. It's called a nebula, and it's, you see a bright star on the left of this cloud. That's illuminating this cloud, making it look blue. But what, I'm, what I want to know here <laughs> is the, regarding the shape. What is this spooky space cloud called? And this is a real name of it. Is it a, called the Ghoul Nebula? the Witch Head Nebula or the Phantom Nebula. We'll come back to it in a, in a, in a while and I'll put the picture back up and I'll explain it. Do you know what, I didn't even look at the answer, but I got it, because I think it's really obvious this one. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> neat. Okay, let's talk about um, Space News. What's going on? Well, uh, making news this week, and we haven't talked about this uh, in a while, is the Phoenix uh, Mars Lander. It seems like the days are numbered for this little intrepid spacecraft. It was originally scheduled to last 90 days. It landed end of May earlier this year. And Phoenix has completed already its fifth month of exploration in the Martian Arctic. And as the Martian northern hemisphere kind of shifts from summer to autumn, the lander has, uh, has been generating less power because there's fewer hours of sunlight reaching the solar panels because the sun dips below the horizon for longer and longer periods of time at the nighttime. And so the weather conditions at the landing site in this Arctic region has become more fierce. The temperatures are dipping as low as minus 100 degrees Celsius at night. Really, really sh chilly. And you can see here some pictures of, uh, of what it's been doing. It's been making trenches in the soil. And these are the last trenches that it had dug with its robotic arm earlier this week. And they shut the arm down because they want to conserve energy now for the spacecraft. So the days are numbered. They think it'll probably die of cold exposure within this uh, by the end of this month. All right, let's get to the answer. Thanks so much for that, Andrew. Let's get to the answer, though, before we run out of time here. <laughs> let's go over it again. Well, what is this spooky space cloud called that we had a picture of? The answer is B, the Witch Head Nebula. And if you look at the picture, you can see that there's a nose in the center. Sure. There's a little mouth and yeah. chin at the bottom. It's sort of crescent shape, a nice profile of a witch head. Yeah, you can almost hear her cackling, you know, a ghoulish <laughs> cackle. <laughs> All right, tell everyone how they can get more information, Andrew. 
Well, if you want to know about what's happening in the night sky, just visit my website, thenightskyguy.com. Thanks so much, and have a really wonderful Halloween. You too. Thanks, Andrew. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty. We'll continue along with your national details and what's coming up. And, of course, your long-range forecast is all coming up soon.